Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Chris and welcome to Linux Tech Geek. So, a while ago, one of my subscribers, um, they left a comment on one of my videos asking about repositories here in Gen 2. Now, what I'm thinking is that they tried to install something and, and they couldn't find it using... Um, you know the the portage repositories and they was asking is there like a third party type of thing so you have the AUR you know for Arch Linux you have copper I think for Red Hat um, and the answer to that question is yes there are third party um, uh, sites and stuff like that. There used to be something called Layman, but I don't think anybody uses a Layman these days. Um, but I will show you here on camera what I personally use. And in fact, we are going to install something using that um, because I want to show you guys something. So let's flip over to the desktop here. All right, let me pull up a terminal. Let me get root super fast. So the program that we need to enable these third-party repositories is called um, it's called eselect. If I can spell select, yeah, it's called eselect repository. Okay, so let's go ahead and merge that. Now, you could probably do some of this by hand, but this app makes it super simple, and uh, it pretty much, you just go through and you select what you want to enable, and it will enable it for you. But I want to show you something. All right, so we have that program installed. So, I like to use the Brave web browser, right? The Brave browser is not enabled by default on Portage, right? So if we do it, EIX Brave. Actually, let's, let me go ahead and get my fonts fixed here for you guys. All right, so if I do EIX Brave, right? No matches found. All right. But if we do that eselect command, we get to see that we have a lot of modules for it, right? And one of those modules is the repository module that we just um, we just downloaded, right? So we could do eselect reposit repository list, right? And now it's going to grab this big list of all these repositories. And uh, we got to wait for this to resolve here. And you can see we have 387 applications that we can go through and we can now look at and we can enable it. And this will allow us to install some programs that, you know, that's not installed. That, that's not in the default uh, repository here on Gen 2. And some of these applications, um, you know, you could probably find a, a GitHub link for or whatever, but this just makes it really, really easy. Okay. And this is personally what I like to do. So you could scroll through here and, and you can really look at whatever you need to look at. However, um, I want to figure out which one is for brave right so we can do list and then i'm going to grip brave is brave not in here anymore brave used to be in here okay well 
looks like we're not going to be uh installing brave uh brave used to be in the in this repository list um they must have taken it out or something because this is how i've always installed that web browser um let's try grip browser grip brow no core browser overlay we don't want that um Huh, that is really weird. I wonder why they actually took it out. Well, let's see if they have anything else that maybe we could kind of enable to, you know, to see if, uh, so they have, so they have GNOME, Haskell, Haskell's in here. Now, unfortunately, it really doesn't tell you a whole lot about the applications. Uh, you kind of need to know the name of the application that you want to uh, install. Um, well, I'll go ahead and install NordVPN because um, I do have Nord. Okay, and so the way that we pretty much we we use this, right... Is we can we do um let me get root again let me enable my fonts again okay hopefully you guys can see that let me scale it down just a tad bit here so we could do eselect reposit repository enable or is it enable or I think it's set Actually, I think it's set. So the way you do it is you type in eselect the module name, which is repository. And then it's either set or enable. Um, and then you want to have the number, right? Whatever number it is. So for us, it's going to be number 228. And I can't remember. 228. No, it's, it's enable. So we enable 228, and now, let me, well that opened up a web browser, didn't it? Let's go back over here, let me go ahead and close that one, scale it down just a little bit for you. But now you can see what it actually does is if we cat out this etc portage repos.com, Okay, what it did, it makes a separate file, and it just, all it does is it puts a URL, okay? You can make this file if you wanted to by yourself, um, as long as you had the appropriate information. Um, but I just like using this eSelect repository um, program because it just makes it so simple. But now, the way that we would install this is, because we can now we can do EIX and then we say Nord VPN. I might I might need a sync. I think we do have to resync here. So let me resync the repositories because it's got to grab all that new metadata. And you can see, you can see right here that it synced the the Nord VPN um, the the actual repo right and now if we do eix nordvpn eix is still not doing it let me do an eix update here there we go so now you see it right here now it shows up i had to do an eix update Okay, and now what we can do is we can just install the program like normal, right? So we could do emerge, um, and then I'll do net VPN Nord VPN, right? 
and of course it's going to be masked some of these packages will be masked okay so you do have to unmask them um but that's not a big um not a big deal so net vpn nord vpn and then we're going to do the newest one because we don't want to have to always do this am amd packet type 64 Forage package dot accept keywords and then I'll do NordVPN and now let's try to do it and now as you can see it will um, allow us to go ahead and install it all right and we install it um, and we can we can use it. So that is pretty much how I like to install, um, you know, third-party applications. Now, if I cannot find it in that list, like we just couldn't find Brave in that list for some odd reason, um, we might have to install it another way, okay? And then I'm going to let this finish installing, and then I'll show you how I would install it another way um i don't understand how come brave is not in that list that kind of threw me for a loop all right now that that's done let's go ahead and flip over to the browser here and i want to try and find brave it's called brave ben on gen 2 so it's got a gen 2 wiki See right here, even the the um, even the 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 wiki stuff tells you how to how how to do this. But maybe if we could just copy over this command here. So, eselect repository add. So, we might be able just to add it like this if it's not in an actual list. Okay. So, I'm going to just pretty much, I'm just going to copy and paste here. Nothing, nothing special. Um, Okay, it added it like that. So let's uh, emerge sync again. Let's see if it syncs correctly this time. Because it there is a overlay for it. Okay, so now it shows up as a overlay. All right, and then EIX Brave. Oh uh, yeah, we gotta do an EIX update. Um, all right, Brave Ben is right there. Okay, so just make sure that when you do that eselect repository and you enable everything and you resync your list, if you're using EIX, because it's not technically a part of Portage, you will need to manually do an EIX update. Um, so that way, EIX will generate help generate that database and and add that stuff um in okay so but as you can see right now brave ben um it's it's there um i did have to actually go to the website or the gitlab and uh add it in manually it wasn't in that default list that um i'm so used to but um thankfully they didn't remove it um I just don't know why um, it was, you know, it was gone from that list. Okay, and it wants to install the, the newest Brave. Let's do that. We like the newest software. And yeah, I mean, that is pretty much it. Um, y you know, other than... Um, other than than using the eselect repository thing, um, you can always, if you need an application, if it's not in the eselect repository list, 
Google it. And if you come to a GitHub or something, you can always build it from scratch. Um, almost every single program, you can build it from scratch. Now, you might have to deal with some kind of dependency issues and everything if it's a larger application. But for the most part, uh, yeah, just, you know, do a little Googling and, you know, kind of cross your fingers, hope for the best. But I hope... This video does help that individual that needed some help. Like I said, this is the method that I have been using pretty much ever since um, I kind of quit using Layman. As you can see at the bottom here, they do talk about Layman, but I, I don't use Layman anymore. I just, uh, I don't really need it for one. Um, nothing's wrong with it. I just, I really just don't need it. Okay, so... I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, if you do find some value in this video, give me a thumbs up. It does help out the channel. And like I said, for the individual that, you know, that needed their question answered, I, I hope this does answer your question. And until next time, I want you guys to take care, be safe, and peace. Bye, guys.